Yeah, yeah, come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anywhere. My place in the back. I'm Guards in the front, back. centers in the, in the back. I'm always in the back. Come on in here. Come on in. We're Solomon. Make sure Solomon gets here. Yeah. Hey guys, thank you for being here today. We'll be very brief in the in our opening comments, so allow plenty of time for Q and A. Uh, I'm David Perdue from Georgia. We've got uh, seven people here today. Um, actually, eight people here who will actually make comments and answer your questions. We're here today to talk about a letter we sent to leadership last week. Um, and basically, this is the message is very clear. You've seen the letter is that we're willing to uh, forego some or all of the uh, August work period because we've got some very uh, important issues that we're, we've got to get, uh, get done and get results for the people back home. The president basically said the first of the year <clears throat> that there were four major priorities this year. One was health care, one was regulation, one was tax, and one was the Supreme Court. We're moving on most of those, but right now, even if we get through health care in the next week or two, between now and the end of the fiscal year, we only have 31 working days left. And we have the debt ceiling to get through, the budget for 2018, the reconciliation that goes with that, and the appropriation process to fund the government before September 30th. And then, even if all that were to get done, we've got tax, which is the, the last thing in the president's agenda that we want to get to this year. And we just want to make sure that we have plenty of time to get all that done. So with that, I'm going to open it up. I think Steve Daines is the first one on the list. We're just going to go alphabetical order, and I'll ask him to make an opening comment. Thank you. Hi, Steve Daines from Montana. Senator Purdue, thank you for uh, hosting this press conference today. You know, many of us here on the stage came from the private sector. There's a lot of private sector experience here. One of the great gaps between the private sector and what goes on in Washington, D.C. is a word that Senator Purdue used, that is results or the lack thereof. Look at a couple of the scorecard issues, I think, for the United States Senate for Congress. The budgeting process has worked four times in 42 years. That's a 10 percent score. Of the 197 presidential nominations to agencies, the Senate's conserved, confirmed 48. That's a 24 percent score. Two out of Trump's 23 judicial nominations have been confirmed by the Senate. That's a 9 percent score. The Senate's confirmed 23 percent of Trump's 216 nominations. That is an 11 percent score. As Senator Purdue mentioned, we've got health care, we've got budgets. We only have 31 scheduled days in the Senate between now and the end of our fiscal year, September 30th, to get a budget passed. This past year, we were seven months into the fiscal year before we finally passed a budget. So I don't see any reason why we need to be leaving this town in August. We should be here doing the people's business. If you were going to school and you were getting failing grades in your spring semester, you better stay in school for the summer and go to summer school, not take a recess. Let's see, who's up next? Uh, uh, Senator Kennedy. John Kennedy. I, I think most Americans don't really care um, politically up here who's winning or losing or who's liberal or conservative or who's left or right or who's up or down or poll numbers. They care about results. And uh, when you look at the issues confronting us, health care, which we're not likely to vote on until next week at the earliest, jobs and growth, which I think can only be achieved through, uh, through tax reform. We've done everything we can do on the monetary side. We've got to address the anemic growth in America on the fiscal side. The infrastructure bill that the president has talked about. The budget, the appropriations process, the debt limit, and a, a bill that's extremely important to my state and a number of other states of the National Flood Insurance Program. Now, anybody who thinks we can get all of that done from the, the, by the end of the year, that's just a testament to the power of human denial. We have got to work longer and harder. I don't mean to step on anybody's toes. I know I'm, I'm new here and there are a lot of traditions and people have things to do back home. But we can't pass bills back home. We've got to be here. And that's the reason I'm here today is to suggest respectfully to my colleagues that we need to work all or a portion of the August recess 
and show some, some results to the, for the American people. I, I don't know many working class Americans who get to take a whole month off. Mike Rams. Well, good afternoon. Mike Rounds out of South Dakota. I had the opportunity to serve as governor of South Dakota for eight years. During that time, our legislative body would meet for basically 40 days and sometimes 40 nights. But at the end of that time period, like most of the other states, uh, we'd get our job done, get things completed in an appropriate fashion before the fiscal year actually started. People could make their plans. They could uh, uh, lay out, based upon what our budgets were, they knew what to expect in state agencies. The individuals who had come in and asked for dollars knew what had been awarded and what had not been awarded in a timely fashion. That's not the way things have worked in Washington for probably 43 years now. And I think as Senator Perdue has indicated, this process has actually worked uh, four times in 43 years. Until such time as we can actually fix this process and allow really good people that work here to get their job done in a timely fashion, and we're probably going to have to spend some extra time here in Washington ra rather than back in the states during those state work periods. I know there's folks back home that they really don't mind it if we get back in and they get a chance to express their opinions once in a while. But uh, at the same time, they expect us to get our work done in a timely fashion. We can't do that right now without spending some extra time here. Uh, the reason for the letter, in my opinion, and the reason why I signed on to it was is that I wanted to let leadership know that uh, if they could see a way to put together some additional time during August in which we could be productive, that they would have our support. And that uh, uh, this was our way of expressing to leadership our support uh, for their interest in extending the time period. And uh, uh, that they would have support within our conference to do that. I think that's very important that we send that message to leadership that uh, if they feel that they can keep us in a productive uh, mode during that time period, that we would support them in that effort. And in doing so, we can actually get more of this done. Wouldn't it be nice for the first time in years to actually go back to the American people and say, while we're trying to fix a system which isn't working, we'll at least let you know in advance of the beginning of the next fiscal year what we intend to spend. Wouldn't that be something that the American people haven't seen in over 40? I mean, wouldn't it be nice to, be able to go back and say we've actually accomplished something along that line? Health care in the meantime, this is something that I think we're moving in the right direction on. I think we can move it forward, but we're going to need some more time and allow more members to actually ask the right kinds of questions that they want to and feel comfortable with what they're doing. We're impacting 18 percent of the entire economy. Allow the time to actually get this done correctly. Thank you. Thanks, David. Well, I'm proud to join my colleagues today. I'm the newest member of this body, and I'm still learning its ways. But um, I'm signing the letter because the people of my state and the people of this country elected a president to come change the ways of Washington, someone who will work from morning till late at night through the weekends to address the issues that have been discussed by my colleagues. We're not doing that when we're on vacation, when we're traveling around the world, as important as those things may be. The people of my state work very hard, the ones that pay taxes and expect their government to listen to them and to deliver. Uh, do not take kindly to the idea that we're not solving the problems they sent us here to solve. We're taking time off to go back and tell them, essentially, that we haven't gotten done what they sent us here to do. So I'm respectfully urging the leadership to um, keep us here. Keep us here through the weekends. Let us work late at night, early in the morning. After all, soldiers, men and women around this world are working all hours of the day and night to protect our country. Uh, we owe no less than to address the issues and take the time necessary to do it. So I respectfully ask the leadership to consider that. I'm talking about the leadership of my party, and I hope the Democrats will join us, of course, uh, to try and solve some real problems that affect real people's lives. Thank you. Dan Sullivan. Dan Sullivan, Alaska. So, you know, the bottom line here is we have this big agenda, and uh, you've heard a lot about uh, what it entails. It also entails rebuilding our military, growing the economy, unleashing America's enormous energy opportunities. You know, when you look at that agenda, what the president ran on, what a lot of us ran on, um, a lot of it is actually a bipartisan agenda. And what we don't have is time. What we're running out of, you see from this chart, is time. So what do we do? We can create more time. We can create more time. We can do that. And, um, you know, you get a sense here, a lot of the members uh, on the dais talking about this uh, are some of the newer members. 
Mike Lee's the senior statesman right now. He just joined us. Um, but uh, you get the sense when you talk about August recess or any other element of recess, it's some kind of sacred issue you can't touch. Well, I think what should be more sacred in our view is getting things done. And uh, we can do that. We can create the time to do it. And that's why we are respectfully encouraging our leadership and hopefully the Democrats um, to help create that time and also to see the government. You may have seen a Wall Street Journal editorial today talking about some of our colleagues on the other side of the aisle, slow rolling, even undersecretaries, assistant secretaries. You know, it's time to get to work for the American people. We can create that time, and that's why we're all standing up here. Right. Years ago, I heard someone say that the worst thing that ever happened in Washington, D.C. was the invention of the air conditioner because it allowed members to stay in session longer than they should have. Well, the fact is, air conditioning has now been invented. It works, and it works well. There's no reason why, when we have as much to do as we do now, why we ought to take as much time uh, as has been planned. Uh, I, we, we have an enormous amount of work to do. And whether you are at the left end of the political spectrum or at the right end or somewhere in, in between, uh, it's difficult to dispute the fact that there is a lot that needs to be done. At this time, it doesn't make any sense for us to just take the month of August off. And I think we ought to continue to, to work through it. Uh, I, I also think that as uh, we also even, even need to look at things like weekends, uh, uh, particularly as we're up against certain time crunches, we ought to be prepared to work long hours and certainly not take this recess. Uh, the American people uh, elect us to make laws. And when our own ability to make those laws is thwarted by our own artificially imposed deadlines, our own uh, artificially strict calendar, it doesn't serve anyone's interest well. Not ours, uh, not that of the American people, certainly. And so that's why I, I applaud uh, Senator Perdue and my other colleagues who are standing uh, firmly on this issue and hope that we can make some progress. Thank you. Tom Tillman. Thank you. I'm Tom Tellis from North Carolina, and I just want to thank Senator Perdue and my colleagues for signing on to the letter. And I also want to thank Leader McConnell because he shares our concern that uh, for a variety of reasons we're losing capacity in the chamber. They say chamber time is the coin of the realm in the Senate. One of the ways we can get it back is to compress the schedule uh, for a recess. And I, for one, think that if we uh, send the clear message as we have that we're prepared to work, uh, we're prepared to work through August to, to work on fulfilling the promises and ultimately fulfill the promises on health care, taxes. We could talk about uh, a number of other things that we have to get done before the end of September. This is pivotal in making sure that we have the time to do it. I fully support it. And I, I again, want to thank all the members that are uh, on the uh, podium here. And I want to thank the leadership for working through a very difficult time. I'm optimistic we'll get to a health care outcome. I'm optimistic that we'll get to all these other outcomes, particularly if we stay back at work in August a little bit more than we're planning on right now. Thank you. Well, thank you. You heard from eight of the 10 that uh, signed on this letter. Uh, Joni Ernst and uh, James Lankford had a conflict, uh, but uh, they have also been supportive of this. With that, uh, now we'll take uh, take your questions. Hello? Yes. Um, Republicans have been holding fewer town halls. Could this be looked at as a way to avoid going home and talk to constituents who aren't very happy about what is being done here? <laughs> You know, only in Washington would you, you know, uh, ask a question of is there a negative uh, motive to this of trying to hide away from the questions back home? Believe me, everybody on this stage goes home every weekend. We're talking to our constituents every day here in Washington, every day when we're back home. Um, that's not the purpose of this at all. Th there's only one purpose, and that's to get the results of people back home who we are talking to or ask asking us to get. Good question. Yes. Hi, Senator, uh, would any of you care to respond to the email chain with Donald Trump Jr. showing that he did, in fact, was aware of Russian government uh, wanting to give him information on the Clinton campaign? I'd like to respond to it in this way. It has nothing to do with what we need to get done in August. You know, the process is going to follow out. Um, and, and we'll let the committees of jurisdiction or, or the, the appropriate folks in Department of Justice sort that out. But that's the very thing that we need to not be distracted by. We have specific things that we have to do here. 
we've got to come up with a health care outcome. We've got to come up with a tax plan. We've got to come up with a, a spending strategy. And we've got to be disciplined and not get distracted by things that may be legitimate, but not right now in our lanes. Yes. Um, Kelly Madrick with CQ. My, my question is, do any of you have a congressional delegation trips, CODEL trips overseas? And if so, do you have contingency plans to cancel those since you want to stay here for August? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. what are those? When, when will you cancel your plan on CODEL? As far as I, I've, I've told my schedules, I'm sure my colleagues have as well, just assume that August has just been rescheduled. Right. I'm prepared to do that any day of the week, any hour of the day. Sure. Gentlemen, are you at all concerned that, I mean, you talk about needing more time, but that time is not the answer to bridging some of the debate on health care, that there might just be people on your conference who are too far apart and whose priorities are too different to get to a common ground on health care? Well, I'm, I'm, look, I think, I think we're, 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 we're going to vote next week. That's my understanding. I hope we do. Um, there's been an enormous amount of time in our caucus spent on the health care bill and the health care delivery system. Uh, Senator McConnell talks about 30 different meetings, but I've been to probably 50 by now. I think everybody understands the bill. Um, in, in my judgment, it's, uh, it's time to vote. Just put it out there. Let people offer amendments. Um, let's 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 just hit it head on. It's not going to uh, it's not going to get any less complex. The Affordable Care Act is not going to get any better. My position on the health care bill has not changed. I, I don't think anybody up here has has changed the position. They they can speak for themselves. But I don't think the Affordable Care Act has worked for the American people. First chance I get to uh, to repeal it, I'm going I'm going to vote for it for the repeal. Now, I've also said that if there's a replacement bill that's better than the Affordable Care Act, although it may not be perfect, I'm going to vote for that. But the bill's changing by the minute. We'll learn more about it today at lunch. But, you know, th there comes a time you got to fish or cut bait. And that's where we are. I mean, it's time to vote. And if you don't like the bill, amend it on the floor. That includes the Democrats. I welcome their support. Let me just uh, let me just add to that one though uh, on the on the question of time. It's not just about health care. When you look at the agenda that we're all talking about here, you know the Senate can walk and chew gum at the same time. You can if you're here, you can we can be working on you know starting to mark up uh, a tax reform bill, which is critical. Anything to grow the economy, which we all again bipartisan, uh, we we have to do that. We can be working on. Uh, an infrastructure bill as we move forward. I mean, we can be moving forward on a whole bunch of different fronts, on a whole bunch of different priorities. Again, most of them bipartisan. We just marked up the NDAA uh, two weeks ago. That's a very important bill. Very bipartisan, by the way. And so the point is, but we got to be here and we need the time to do it. But we can be attacking these different issues that are key priorities for all of our constituents, whether Democrats or Republicans, uh, for this country. But if we're not here, and if we're essentially working three days a week, which is what we do, uh, we're not going to get it done. Thank you, Senator. So you all wrote this letter to Leader McConnell. Um, have you received any response to that letter? Well, several of us have talked to leadership about Mike, this on the way from last year. Mike, Mike. Sorry. Sorry. Several of us have actually talked to leadership about this over, over some period of time. Um, this is not a shot at leadership. Um, basically, this is a positive letter saying that, look, this is the work we know we have ahead of us. We're willing to amend the tradition here in the Senate. I think the last time this was even attempted was 1994. And so this is the time. I mean, people back home put a new president in the White House. They, they, they put most of us are, are new. In fact, all of us are relatively new. And so we, we're very close to what people back home are telling us, and that is they expect results up here. And this is much bigger than just health care. We need to get to this tax bill. This tax bill is the, is the final chapter in getting this economy going that the president laid out uh, earlier this year. Let me touch, just want to, and I, I, what Senator Perdue is saying is absolutely correct. You know, we, we've had the opportunity to get back home on a regular basis over the summertime. We've been to coffees, as we call them in South Dakota. Some people call them town halls. 
We've done the programs where we do our parades. We do our powwows in South Dakota. And the one message we get time and again is, is they sent us here to fix some things. They didn't send us here to let the status quo just continue on. And part of the way that you do that is, is you actually get together and you get things done. What we're finding is, is that this Senate schedule is such that when you have the delays that are being imposed right now, and it, it is the Democrats' prerogative to delay, they can do that. That's their, that's their, that's their, uh, their right. But that means then that we've got to do as the majority uh, what we think is right, and that is, is to get our job done as well. You've not only got tax reform that we have to address, we've got a budget that's got to be done. I mean, none of this stuff is new to any of you. You've been covering all this. But simply to look at the 30 days or, or so that, that are in August and simply to say that because we, a number of us have looked at CODELs and so forth, and I know some of our senior members are really serious about the CODELs. They think they're very, very important, and they are. It's one way to learn about a lot of different issues, and we're not going to discount their importance. But we think even if we can't do the entire recess or the entire state work days back here in Washington, then let's at least try to do one or two weeks back here in Washington rather than on CODELs or back during the, the state work days or the state work periods and spend some more time here on the floor of the Senate to work through this process. I mean, wouldn't it be a, a, a refreshing thing if the American people could actually see a seriousness about doing things on time for a change, even if it meant disrupting a planned schedule for the United States Senate. And I think that's our message is, is and I think leadership is looking for that kind of a message coming from, from, from the members. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, we'll, we'll, we'll do both of these, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, this is uh, particularly for Senator Sullivan, Rounds, and me. Senator Kennedy said that his position has not changed on the health care bill, but I want to know from the three of you where you stand right now on the health care bill. My, my position right now is still that this is better than what we have and that our biggest challenge here is, is trying to get over an Obamacare hangover. We have to move back into a competitive market position again. But right now what's happened is, is the cost of health care has gone up so dramatically since Obamacare was installed in the country. The American people can't afford to simply have us do a repeal only. We have to do a repeal and a replacement. Otherwise, people are going to get hurt. And so what, what I think we have to do when we're talking about 18 percent of GDP and we're talking about real lives here that are impacted by what we do, we've got to continue to send the message out there that the plans that we're looking at still protect against pre-existing conditions. They still provide more money for Medicaid than what there is today because we're only slowing the rate of increase. We're not stopping the rate of increase on Medicaid. And what we're really trying to do is to get this into a sustainable fashion for the next generation. That's the message that we've got to be able to send. But we can make this a better product than what it is today. If this is all we can do, it's still better than what we've got today. We can make it better if we're given the time and the opportunity to do so. Can I, I want to make sure you understand my position, though. I, I don't know what's in the bill right now. We've seen a draft. It's changed. I think everybody up here. It reserves the right to read the bill. I don't want to make the mistake that the Democrats made in the House. So I, 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 don't, I haven't decided what to do on this bill. I want to see it. I, I've said it all along, my preference for full repeal of Obamacare. It is what we campaigned on as Republicans. Basically every Republican who campaigned for federal office for seven years has promised that. I think that's what we ought to do. The bill, uh, the last iteration of the Senate bill is one that I cannot support. Uh, I, I, I've uh, pointed out to my colleagues there are some changes that could be made to it that could bring me along. Uh, among those changes that could be made would be to allow people to use pre-tax dollars to pay their premiums using a health savings account and another amendment uh, 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 amounting to the uh, consumer freedom uh, uh, language that we've discussed. That's one way to get me to yes on the bill. If it's not that particular amendment, some other form of meaningful relief from the Title I regulations in the Affordable Care Act. So, uh, I'm sorry, one, one quick. Well, just very quickly, I mean, I, I've been arguing that there's probably no state in the country that's been more negatively impacted by the Affordable Care Act than Alaska. Um, our premiums in the individual market have uh, more than tripled, if you saw this HHS study, from a very high level already. Uh, 
The average premium for just one individual now is almost close to $1,100 a month. One person in my state. So what I've been very focused on and continue to focus on, I'm going to look for, uh, I'm going to continue to press for opportunities, is make sure the bill uh, has provisions that address the structural high cost of insurance and health care in extreme rural states like mine. Senator, I, I know you say you don't want to deal with distractions, but isn't it more of a dis, isn't it more than a distraction at this point if we have email evidence that Donald Trump Jr. and the campaign manager met with someone who was described as a Russian government lawyer with dirt about Hillary Clinton? Look, uh, the, the 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 question I ask myself as as a, one of the members of the U.S. Senate is to what extent does that swim in the lanes of Veterans Affairs where we're trying to discuss the next Choice Act? It doesn't. To what extent does it involve my role in the Committee on Aging? It doesn't. To what extent does it involve my role on Senate Armed Services? It doesn't. So for my purposes, it's about discipline in the areas that we have to focus on that just as Senator Sullivan said, we can walk and chew gum. And that's what we need to do. And to the extent that there are members in this body who need to focus on that, then those questions really need to be levied towards them so that we stay focused and we get the most out of what will hopefully be additional legislative days between now and the end of August. Thank you all. That's it, guys. Thank you very much. I just want to re reiterate one thing that uh, you heard from everybody up here. This is a positive, constructive effort to get results for the people back home. That's all. Thank you.